Hello guys, I'm here, and um, welcome to the first ever advanced computer craft tutorial. So, um, last season we kind of capped it all off making a game, and um, you know, we learned a couple of stuff like functions, printing, how to, you know, use the cursor and change that, how to edit colours, um, we talked about loops and if statements and for statements, so, you know, we talked about the basic stuff um, that you need to know how to get started on computer craft. So, um, what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to talk about APIs. And for the next episodes, I'm going to keep on talking about functionality of code. And then I might, you know, string it together and teach you how to combine all these components together. So, like I said, today we're going to be learning about APIs. And APIs are spelled API, like that. Uh, and it's an abbreviation which stands for Application Programming Interface. And it sounds a bit wordy and complicated, but it's actually quite simple. Um, so, without explaining it, what I'm going to do firstly is I'm just going to type test, which is I've got a program on here called test, and it just clears my screen. And if we look in test, we can see I have a function, and then I call the function later on. Very simple. Um, Thing that you you know, I hope you know. Um, now I'm going to list everything here, and you can see that I have a directory, a, f a folder called API. So if I open up API and I have a look in here, I have more test programs. Now if I try and run test two, you'll see that nothing happens, and that's because that's my API folder or the thing that I'm dedicating for my uh, API. Now. An API is kind of like a save folder, um, it, or a save file. It has um, a bunch of functions, like it can have an unlimited amount of functions in it that you can um, use from other programs. So having to, you know, rather than like typing clear on 16 different programs, you know, 16 different clear functions have to be made, and with APIs, all you can do is you can save them, and so those 16 little files that have 16 different clear functions can all be removed and just put into one file. And if you have a look in here, into test 2, you can see there's a clear function and there's a size function. Like I said, it's a save file, and I've saved the most common things that I've used, well, that I use. So, if I get out of there now, and I show you test, you see the screen's just cleared and it's come up with two pieces of information the x coordinate and y coordinate um, here, which is like you know the endpoint. So it's the maximum amount of pixels I can have on here, so 19 times 51. So if you have a look in test, you'd expect there to be a clear function usually, but because we're using APIs, you'll see here that there's absolutely no functions whatsoever. Um, what we do instead is we load our um, API folder with this little line here that I'm currently on. So os.loadapi, and then we use something called a path. Now, if you imagine a computer's files and folders to be a road, um, that's kind of what a path is. It's like the route that you have to take in a computer to get to the file that you want. So I've gone through a directory here and I've said in this folder API there is a program file called test2. I want you to load that up as an API. And then, like using term, if we thought that term was an API, we could do term dot to separate the file name from the actual function, we can call all of these different types of functions. Set cursor, pass, background, scroll, redirect native, you know, a bunch of stuff. And these are stuff, well these are things that you would use um, quite often. So clear, I more often than not use that a lot. So I've put it in my API as a good example of, um, of what functions you may commonly use in there. So, my API file is called test2, I've put in a dot, and I've called a function like you normally would do, uh, 
with clear with an opening bracket and a closing bracket. Now, with um, like programs that give an output, for example, um, term dot get size, you'd usually get an x and y coordinate, or you know some form of output. Now, with APIs, you can actually get outputs out of your functions, and the way you do that is by I show you in here using something called a return. Now a return is tells you that this function is a uh, this is going to give out an output. So in this case, it's giving out these two variables x and y as an output. And if we look on test two, uh, not test two, test, we can see here that we actually you know say that x and y. They don't necessarily have to be x and y, they could be anything else, but I'm just using that as an example. x and y equals test2.getSize, so the function get size basically. Well, not get size, just size. And then I just print all the variables. So, you know, it's kind of, it's pretty simple. Um, I recommend you mess around with this a bit until you're a bit more confident with it, because, you know, using APIs, you can actually drastically reduce the amount of... Um, lines that you have to write into your code. So yeah, um, this is the first episode of uh, Advanced Computer Craft Tutorials. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, next episode we're going to be talking about monitors and basically how you can use them. Uh, I would be doing open peripherals but unfortunately the mod seems to have a couple of problems right now. So uh, yeah, we'll be talking about monitors, how to use them, and yeah, so that'll be next Saturday. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, um, leave some feedback on what you think I should do later on. And yeah, I'll see you later. So I'm checking out.